So you need to have at least three, four days, and you should have more than that. And you have to think about maybe your friend's got a can of beans or some, or <laughs> something to keep you from going uh, crazy hungry in between. You know, if you got a friend, if you talk to somebody, if you might, if it might be possible in uh, science fiction movies that this could happen, then accept a little bit of the, you know, hey, well, I'll buy an extra can just because. See what happens. And you know what? Every, everybody, all these people who keep saying, well, I don't see nothing happening, and I don't know when this is going to get fixed, and that is, I really am sick of hearing that, but... You know, something that we don't think about. We have become uh, a society addicted to instant gratification. And that means that we want everything right now. We don't want to wait for it. We don't want to prepare for it. We want it right now. And that's been created for us with the most insidious concept ever presented to man and that is credit get out of it and stay away from it your great grandparents never went and applied for credit when they wanted to buy land or they wanted to buy a house or they needed a horse and buggy and when cars first came out people didn't go finance them they saved up for them. And when they bought a house, they saved up for a down payment. Even when mortgages first came about, they worked hard, they saved up, and when they bought material goods, those material goods belong to them. Nowadays, it's instant gratification. You want something? Hmm. How much have I got on this credit card? Hmm. So let's go take a... We deserve a vacation. Let's take a cruise. I got enough on the credit card. Buy the cruise. Now you're paying for that cruise five years from now and the interest on it that you'll never get paid off until that credit card defaults and then you're fighting debt collectors and then you have to come to one of my calls to learn how to beat them. (laughs) You know, but if you wouldn't have put yourself in that position, you would not be in that boat now. We've got to get rid of it. Exactly. Welcome back. Uh, This is Theatra with Freedom Reigns. And uh, we have uh, Drake and Terry with us who have been speaking for the last hour or so. But uh, as I said, we have a new member to our team She is uh, heading up another section of our county project, and um, she kind of, uh, her her idea goes right along uh, with with what Drake and Terry were just saying, and so I'd like to welcome Anita from Ohio. Anita, welcome, hon. Hi, how are you? I've been been listening, and it's been pretty interesting. Good. Well, I know. Yes, we have been waiting. Hey, you are heading up what you call the uh, relocalization, and a lot of that goes right along with what we've been discussing the first hour. And you have got a lot of different uh, things that uh, your county is involved with. And uh, I'd like you to kind of share it with us and kind of let the people know um, the different uh, things that we can be forming uh, throughout our counties. And uh, you know, later we'll tell them how to go about getting involved and uh, organizing. Okay, I'd be happy to. Um, maybe I could give people just a little bit of idea of where, wh- how I got here uh, and how I got to be looking at local issues. Um, In 2006, I founded the Central Ohio Relocalization Effort as a response to pending peak oil. Our group was a chapter of the National Relocalization Network of the Post Carbon Institute. This network, which is now defunct, 
was under the false assumption that the long-distance transport model of globalization would ultimately fail due to rising gasoline prices and, and shortages, and that a more local model of trade would be necessary to replace it. Um, that would be nice, but I, I don't see any sign of that right now. Walmart seems to be doing well, and my, my local stores seem to be doing poorly. One of the primary goals of each chapter was to perform an independent inventory of our community. This inventory included transportation, food, business, health care, media, entertainment, currencies, nonprofit organizations, and local government. Um, because I live in a large metropolitan area, this was no easy task. There were several of us involved in this research, and we attended many meetings and interviewed tons of people so that we could get an idea of how these things functioned within our community. If people want to go to the website um, that I started, oh, just in the past week, called Relocalize Ohio dash Franklin County. And I think you can Google that and get there. Um, you can take a look at the site because I'm going to kind of talk about it a little bit. Uh, you can see this is kind of what you, you call somewhat of a local inventory. Since Drake and others were talking about food and a garden, I thought maybe you guys wouldn't mind if we ran down some of the local food ideas that we came across. Um, so I'm looking at that page, and anybody who can look at that page and click on local food will see exactly what, what we discovered. These kind of things should also be very helpful to anyone in any county throughout the country because some of these efforts, you probably don't know about them unless you looked for them. You wouldn't even know they were there. I didn't know they were there until I started doing the inventory and doing the research. So if you look at the page, the first one is a local harvest. That's a national effort. When you click on that, you can put in your zip code, and it will show you where farmers markets are in your area, community-supported agriculture, which is just a fabulous idea, whereas local growers start their season, uh, and you sign up, you give them money to buy agriculture throughout the summer from them. So it's your money. You help them fund the, the money they need, the seed money they need to plant their crops. In return, they give you the produce that they produce a certain amount uh, throughout the season. Um, that's a great place. Almost everybody needs to start there. Also, all the farmers markets and, and even just local farmers that, that are, are selling cheese or whatever. Um, the next one is Slow Foods USA. That's another network. Um, if you go to their website, Slow Foods USA, you can look at that and, and you can click on where their chapters are. You may find a chapter near you or you may just want to, you know, find a way to start your own. The next one is Local Matters. That is happening right here in Columbus and they've been up and running since I started this, I think since 2006. But again, if I hadn't looked for them, I don't see them, you know, in my daily routine doing my errands. I had to seek them out, and lo and behold, there they were. I went to their meeting. I met them. They're great people. I can help spread the word about these people, and I can do what I can to support them. The next one is Ohio Ecological Firm Food and Farm Association. They have all kinds of programs to help people um, with food issues, and, and they promote sustainable, ecological, and a healthy food system. In Ohio, they did uh, an effort. They don't put it out there too much. Other states, I'm sure, have done the same thing because I think they've got restrictions from NAFTA or from other, other places. Any time a, a state would, say, buy us first in a big way, then currently with the trade deals and the World Trade Organizations, they can be criticized pretty pretty seriously. So you almost, in Ohio, you have to know to look for this. I found them at the fairground when I went to the state fair. State fairs, county fairs, wonderful places to find out who the local producers are. You can find out who local businesses are. You learn all kinds of things about what's going on in your county at the county fair or at the state fair. 
um, the Growing to Green. This is going on right here in my county, and there is a national community gardens organization. I don't know if they have a chapter. You can Google um, the National Community Gardens and see if there's anyone near you. The one that we have is coming from the conservatory, and they, you know, I could get a group of people. I thought about doing that. I haven't done it yet. And they will help you take a vacant lot. They will help you get some funding. They will give you instructions, and you can make a community garden out of our vacant lots. I've known people who've done that. They had a great time. It was very successful. Then uh, then there's a group out there, believe it or not, called Food Not Lawns. I joined them. I was thrilled with what they're doing. They've got all kinds of great ideas, and they've got chapters all over the country. Um, You can check their website out and see if there's a chapter near you. If there isn't one, you can start your own chapter. Uh, I put down there a sample of edible landscaping. There is a link to that plan. That came from some gentleman at Ohio State University. And I was just so impressed with what they did. Here we're doing all this lawn stuff and putting chemicals on our yards when actually we could could grow food in our yards. And if you want to and in your artistic, you can even make it look good. Um, And the last one is just a local lady. She has a website that I found, Columbus Foodie. And she likes to visit local restaurants, and she likes to put up what she finds, and she's really quite interesting. So that's just some of the survey that I did for Central Ohio when it comes to local food so that I would know where it is and try to help promote it um, and learn who's doing it and who can help me learn to grow food. We did start a garden. Um, I'm not too good at it yet. I can't believe how much there is to learn. And no sooner did we seem to get it in and everything was going well than we were introduced to the cucumber beetle. Heck, I didn't even know there was such a thing. But this little guy took out all our cucumbers. Uh, So there's a lot to learn on gardening. Drake is right. You can start a garden, and it's a lot of fun. But you're going to find, you know, knowing people in a garden club Um, or meeting people at the nursery who are buying food plants, you're probably going to need help from people who know how to grow food. I don't know, Drake, do you grow food? Do you have people who ask you for advice? Um, My first garden goes in uh, as soon as I get my tiller. Okay. And uh, there are several things that I've uh, done. A combination of that is uh, Gardening USA. Uh, tells you how to prepare soil, depending on what your soil type is, uh, so you can grow something. Uh, then to go along with that, you've got uh, a load of uh, simple books that uh, gives you the basics for uh, how to go about uh, doing different things. I've talked to the neighbors and found out what grows up here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and- there's a there's a variety. I mean, um, yes, I've grown things before. Um, uh, and there's a learning curve, isn't there's there? There's uh, several ways to go about it all, and uh, I've got room in my basement. I'm going to put an indoor garden in, so I'm going to have mm-hmm. fresh stuff all year round. Mm-hmm. That's a great mm-hmm. idea. So, That's a great idea. And and the thing about growing local food, you know, not only can you prepare for emergencies, that's a great way you guys were talking about your neighbors, you know, connecting with your neighbors. Well, when we did our first garden, we were up to our neck in tomatoes, right? So what did I do? I gave tomatoes to the neighbors, you know. They were thrilled. Mm-hmm, <laughs> it, hey, guys, it, guys, we have a caller on the line, um, and I'm bringing her up now. Uh, this is Ginger. Ginger, do you have a comment or a question for one of our guests? Um, I do. Is it okay if we change the subject from gardening? For a moment, yeah, go ahead. You have a comment. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, no, I just I, um, really would like to address Drake. Uh, I've listened to probably the last three programs, uh, three to four programs, and uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for bringing this information out because it's probably one of, one of the only ways I would have heard about it um, as far as 
what we're getting ready to experience in this country. And I'm just mostly concerned um, about timing and 